For my episodes 68 and 121, I read stories about cats. As I explained in the first episode, traditionally cats were often viewed in less than favorable light. Its more independent and secretive nature didn't sit well with the Confucian ideal. For that reason, in horror supernatural genre, cats usually take up the role of the villains. While dogs often play the role of a faithful companion and even a rescuer, cats are pictured as the vengeful and cunning creatures. Now, today's collection still includes a scary, vengeful cat theme, but overall, it's more a mixed bag. Alongside the scary cats, there are also a cat as the reincarnation of a caring grandmother, a loving cat that returns to say the last goodbye, and even the stray cats that rescue a person. Comparing to the previous episode, there are much less animal abuse element, but I'll put a pre-warning for the animal lovers among my listeners. So, here are seven allegedly true, bizarre stories about cats. As always, hand-picked, translated and narrated by host, Anthony. I used to do some volunteer work at an animal shelter. One day I heard a staff complaining about a stray cat keep damaging the bag of cat feed. There wasn't enough space in the shelter and we had to pile the bags of feed outside under the eaves. And something was targeting them. We checked the record of the surveillance camera and indeed it captured the cat. Ripping a bag of feed, nibble some of it, and disappear into the pile of construction debris. The shelter building used to be a factory, and some of its old machineries and stuff were still there as a pile. We decided to finally tackle the debris pile, half expecting that the stray cat might have made a home under it too. We managed to throw most of the pile away, but there was no sign of a cat until I lifted a big old pipe and found the remain of a cat. It must have been dead a long time ago that the body turned into a dried up mummy. What struck me was how the pattern of its coat resembled a cat recorded on the surveillance, black dots against white coat. There was no more sign of any other cat having sheltered there. We buried the remain in the mountain nearby. I wonder if the cat that kept tackling the bags of feed was not the spirit of the dead cat, that it might have tried to catch our attention to weigh the laid dead and forgotten. After that day, there were no more instant of broken bags of feed. This is from 1999. I was in the last year of the vocational school, and I was out with the two other mates for an apprenticeship in Swan. The company dormitory was well equipped and cheap, but we three soon found a private lodging to escape its tight schedule and rules. And it happened after about three months in the lodging. That evening, I and other mate was on the night shift, so the second mate, let's call him Juhan for the sake of the story, was resting alone in the room, when the old landlady knocked on the door. She called Juhan out to the garden. There was a shed, and in the tight space between the shed and the fence were five newborn kittens in a paper box chip-chipping. Seemed like a stray cat had taken a shelter there to give a birth. Landlady said she didn't want them. They would make noise and would smell. Could Juan take them out? Well, it wasn't too big a task, so he agreed to do that. The landlady emphasized, Cats are clever things. Make sure to put them well away. 
at least a few blocks down. Also, close the box so that they can't see where they are going. Zhu Han tended to believe in such old wives' tales, so he indeed followed the instruction, took a turn and corners to make the route less obvious, and left the box under a lamp post a few blocks down. He simply thought somebody might find them and take home. A few days passed, and Zhu Han started getting a weird dream every night. A woman with a dark complexion with a mop of hair would crawl up to him and strangle him, dripping bloody tears from her eyes and curses between her teeth. Yet stranger thing was, whenever Chuan woke up from the nightmares with a startle, he would find his room all messed up. There were hardly anything in the temporary lodging anyway, and yet his clothes that were hanging, his books, dishes, and stuffs would be strewn about in the room when he woke up. Maybe he physically struggled so much while having the nightmare, he first thought. But soon it became clear that alone could not explain it all. Because his stuffs were not just thrown about, but also found damaged. Dishes were broken, pages of books torn, and his shirts torn into shreds. We were all young and didn't know what to think of this bizarre situation. We just assumed Zhuhan was suffering a strange case of sleepwalking or something like that. In the end, he got a few days off from work and went back to his family home. But the weird phenomenon continued even during his absence. We would find our room in a mess when we came back from work. And even I and other friend started getting the same nightmare occasionally. Life became stressful, but with our tight budget, we could not find another lodging either. One Saturday, I went out to drink with some colleagues while the other friend went back to the lodging, claiming he'd rather sleep more. It was passing two in the morning when I came back. To find a friend crouched down in the middle of the room with a pale face. Hey, what are you doing? I asked. Kid, I had that dream again. You know, strangled by that bitch. And I woke up as usual, but even then, I could not breathe. I coughed and struggled and coughed out. This, said he, and showed me what looked like a black fur ball. Following day, we called Chuan up and asked if he did something bad to an animal or something. At first, he seemed to have genuinely no idea what we were talking about, but soon remembered the five kittens. I and the other friend went to the lamp post where Juan left a box of kittens. Unlike his naive expectations, nobody cared for them. Two were missing, and three seemed to have been dead for many days already. And then we saw a dark grown-up cat glaring at us from afar. Could it have been the mother? We found a little empty plot and buried the box under a tree. That put an end to our nightmare and strange phenomenon, but we were nevertheless left shaken by the experience. We explained to Juan what happened over the phone, and he never returned to the apprenticeship post. It's what happened to a friend's friend. I'll call him Pyongil here for the sake of the story. 
Pyongil lived in a small rented flat near his university. It was infested with rats and cockroaches, really a lot. His girlfriend, who visited this place a few times, got so traumatized with the pests that she declared that she wouldn't visit again. When the usual traps and poisons didn't work, Pyongil came up with an idea to keep a cat. He started researching about how to raise a cat and where to get one, but it all seemed much bigger of responsibility than a poor student could easily afford. About the same time, Pyongil's grandmother passed away. She was in a ripe old age and also passed peacefully, so it was in a relatively calm mood at a funeral attended by her sons to grandsons to great grandchildren. Offering a white chrysanthemum to her shrine, Pyongil somehow felt her presence near, and prayed, "Granny, help finding a cat." Would you please? After the funeral and burial, Pyongil came back to his flat, and found in front of his door a cat, white with grey stripes. It didn't run away even when Pyongil approached. It not only let him touch, but sounded almost welcoming him with low meows. When Pyongil opened the door to get in. The cat slipped in before him, and settled down on the foot rug in front of the bathroom door. Well, it all clicked in like it was a destiny. Pyongil hurriedly stocked up some cat food, and in subsequent weeks bought stuffs for the cat piece by piece: the litter box, brush, and even a cat tower. The cat would come out with Pyongil on his way to university in the morning, went away on her way, and then wait at the door about the time Pyongil should return. She was so independent that they felt more like a roommate than a pet. Above all, there were less and less rats and roaches ever since the cat started to share the flat. Pyongil was very happy with a cat. She didn't nag or make troubles for attention. And would just occasionally give him a quiet stare or watch on while he was asleep. Pyongil managed to convince his girlfriend that his flat was now clear of creepy crawlies thanks to his cat. Girlfriend was immediately smitten with a cat and even gave her a bath. The happy three cuddled and played a while in bed, and well. As it is natural for a young couple, it led to Pyongil and his girlfriend getting intimate. When they were done, they found the cat wasn't there anymore. The door and windows were locked too, and she still disappeared into the thin air. Later that evening, Pyongil was alerted by a loud car horn banging right outside his room. He went out to check, and saw a big black car. And in front of it was his late grandma. Pyongil called out, "Grandma!" Grandma looked at him and said, "Now you are free of rats and roaches. So have fun." In a sassy voice. She was escorted into the black car by a guy in black, and soon the car drove away. Pyongil never saw his white cat again, nor his late grandma manifested again. Now he keeps another cat, but he'd say he still feels a chill when his cat should stare at him quietly. Following story includes some description of animal abuse. Viewer discretion is advised. When I was about fourteen, I visited my grandma in the countryside with three other friends on one winter vacation. After dinner, grandma went to bed early, and I and my friends were just chatting, lying on the hot floor heated with firewood. 
The topic had it to scary stories. Most were silly, jump scare type of stories, but in the quiet of the winter night in the countryside village, we were all immersed in the spooky mood. <coughs> we all jumped from the sudden cat screech right outside the door. A friend who particularly disliked cats bursted out and tried to scare it away, but the cat stepped away just a few meters. And came right back to scream outside the door once again. After the same routine repeated a few times, the friend got mad. He picked up a hand sickle that was lying on the side and chased after the cat. The rest of us just laughed because thought there was no way that he could catch up with a cat. But dear, oh dear, his wild slashing in the air. Did cut off the cat's tail. Cat ran away over the fence with a sharp screech. In the middle of the night, the cat slasher friend woke up that he had to go to the toilet. It was still just a privy outside the house in Granny's old farmhouse, and it wasn't an easy task to go there at night with no light at all. Upon his insist, we four escorted him to the privy with a hand torch, and waited outside while he finished his business. <coughs> a cat suddenly jumped on us from the darkness. We three dropped the torch and ran away with a scream. And the friend in the privy, while trying to get out in a hurry in the pitch dark, fell into the privy hall and deep. Into the goo. My God, I still can't forget the stench from him. Since that day, that friend didn't even walk past a cat should he run into one on the street. Back in two thousand four. A cat came to my house unexpectedly. A young cousin managed to get the cat after a long nagging, but his mom suffered severe cat allergy and could not keep the cat in the house any more, and handed over to me. I love animals. I kept a few dogs from childhood and a couple of cats too, but none of them were of such an expensive pure breed as the cat Pecco. She was an elegant Russian blue, and still very young, just six months old. I took her up, thinking I could just take care of her as I did the other cats I used to care for, but nope. She was a princess and demanded care and attention as much as raising a baby. Despite of it all, Pecco was that rare puppy cat kind. Welcomed me from the door, followed me around wherever I went, and so amiable. I quickly fell in love with her. But our life together was not meant to be long. Not quite two months after Pecco came to my home, she slowly faded away. I took her to a vet and tried to save her, but one rainy evening, I came home. Only to be met by her cold body. I wrapped her body with a clean handkerchief and laid in a paper box and put it in the balcony. Rain was pouring down so much I could not find a place to bury her right away. And that night, as I was falling asleep, I heard a cat meowing from afar. It got gradually closer and louder until it rang right next to my ear. I was by then wide awake, but could not dare to open my eyes. I don't know if it was a sleep paralysis or overwhelming emotion, but I could not move or indeed breathe a while. I woke up and went to grab a glass of water to calm myself down. When I turned around with the glass in my hand. I saw shadows of cats jumping and playing about against the faint light floating in from the balcony. Two, three of them. 
I was so shocked that I dropped the glass, which shattered on the floor. The noise woke my mom up, and by the time she came out and turned on the light, the shadows were gone. Mama asked me what was up, but I couldn't explain. It took two days till the rain stopped. I took Peko up the local mountain and tried to find a sunny spot to lay her to rest. A week passed. I slept with my room door left open because it was still too warm. As I was falling asleep, I heard the distinctive light footsteps of a cat, coming from the living room to my bedroom, and it jumped up on my bed just as Peko used to. I knew it was her, and then a single, gentle meow, and then it was gone. I have not seen any shadow or heard anything since then. I pray, and I'm sure, she's now peacefully passed on. My family home is an old house. I hear my grandpa built it some sixty years ago. As with any old things, it has developed its own character and, frankly, a bit spooky. In winter, drafts sweep through the house. There's also some loft space between the roof and the ceiling, and stray cats made it their home. The noise that rings underneath when they jump around up there is one thing, but the baby cry-like howling they make when they go into heat. Is really creepy. I sometimes run into them around the house, and their eyes are so wild I don't even dare to stare them back. Anyway, I don't sleep deep. Even the noise of blowing wind would disturb my sleep. As I said, this old house must have lots of holes, and winds do create quite a noise. For the reason, I always close window and door of my bedroom tightly shut before going to bed, even in summer time. I guess the family pet dog doesn't approve of my habit, and is sometimes scratch on my door, nagging to let him in. But my sleep is more important than his temper, so I never open the door. That night, I was sleeping as usual. And heard dog's footsteps out in the living room. My dog usually sleeps with mom, but would sometimes come out to drink some water from his bowl in the kitchen. But this footsteps, rather than walk away into the kitchen, seemed to get closer right up to my door. Aha! The doggy was nagging to let him in again. I thought. I wanted to shout, "Go away!" Then, I realized I could not move or shout. It was a sleep paralysis. Only then I realized the scratch on the door was coming from somewhat too high a point on the door. My little lap dog can stand barely forty centimeters high on its hind legs. How could he scratch about the middle point of the door then? I got scared, but couldn't do anything. Still being paralyzed. But then, Tai Su, open the door. It was my mom. Tai Su, open. Tai Su. It was mom's voice, all right. But something was off. I shut the door, but I don't lock the door. My mom never cares about knocking before entering. She just bursts in if she has to. I anyway still couldn't move or respond, but the knock and call that got more and more intense made me panic. That I wished I rather passed out. And just as suddenly as it started, 
it got quiet again. Was it over now? No. Cold air brushed my back, and something started wrapping me around. Wrapping me around like a snake would its prey. The grip got tighter to the point I could not even breathe any more. Was I going to die, just like this? From the ceiling rang out the familiar cat's screech, followed by loud noise of them jumping around. But no, it was much more intense than usual. The screeches were almost in unison, and the rattle they created were enough to make the ceilings shake. And with that, I felt the grip around my body getting weaker. As soon as I could breathe again, I jumped up and ran out of my room. Once I was sure that I was alive, I went to grab some water to calm myself down. And saw my pet dog coming out from Mum's room. Clearly, just woke up from the noise I made. I also heard Mum soundly asleep, snoring away in her room. In the morning, I also happened to notice there were scratch marks on the outside of my door. I mean, it's an old door, and there already were some parts the paint scratched and peeled off, but some of them were certainly fresh. What was that that tried to get me that night then? And who would have thought those nuisance stray cats would come to my rescue? Thank you, cats, but I'm still scared of you, wild things. It's a story my cram school teacher told us. The teacher is from Kangwon Province. It's particularly mountainous region and often represents remote rural countryside. The teacher's hometown was one such a small remote village, and he and his two-year younger brother had to walk two hours to go to the school. The journey could be quartered if they walked straight over through the hill. But the hill was so densely forested and full of bushes that it was more like a small mountain. It was also rumored some people who ventured out over the hill never returned. Whatever the truth was, it was an unspoken rule among the villagers not to go there. And so, teacher and his brother had to take the much longer way around the hill to and from their school. One morning, teacher and his brother were on the way to school as usual. There was a big zinco tree on the way, but he noticed something wasn't as usual as they got closer to it. He looked up at it closely. Something was hanging there, swaying in the wind. A woman. A black tongue. Dangled down to her chin, her clouded eyes were, well, dead. She had been clearly dead for a while already. He gave a look at the face barely a second, but he said the whole image of it, down to the details, was still stuck in his memory. As soon as he registered what it was, he snatched his younger brother's hand and just ran, ran, ran. Fortunately, his brother didn't seem to have noticed the dead woman. Their ordeal was not over, though. Now they would have to take the same way back after school. The teacher didn't ever want to walk underneath the horrendous-looking dead woman. The only other way home. Was through the forbidden hill. The hill, well out of the beaten path, was completely taken over by dense bushes and weeds. The boys lost the sense of direction. Surrounded by grass taller than them, they only seemed to walk around in a loop and couldn't find a way out. Soon dusk set in, and mercilessly came the night. 
exhausted and scared, boys just dropped on the ground and cried. But then they heard voices of calling their name. Their parents, when the boys failed to turn up past dinner time, came out to search for them with some neighbors. Why the heck did you come to the hill? Their dad interrogated, and the teacher told the adults what he saw in the morning: the woman's body on the zinco tree. Following morning, villagers went to the zinco tree. Significant decomposition took place. Meanwhile. Her tongue dangled further lower down, the rope cut deeper into her throat, revealing the bone underneath, and her guts were spilling out as if wild animals had a go at them. It was such a horrible sight that nobody was willing to touch and take her down first. There was a village idiot, a poor guy born with a Down syndrome, abandoned by his parents at birth, raised by the villagers, and became the labourer of all dirty works in the neighbourhood. But even he took one look at the woman and ran away screaming. In the end, people had to bring in some extra help from the nearby city before they could enter her body in a coffin. Now the task was to dig a hole to bury it. My teacher was still a boy, but a seasoned worker, having helped his parents from early age, so he joined in in digging. But inside, he was still traumatized about the whole thing. To think the dead woman was lying inside a coffin just a few meters away. He tried not to look at it, but couldn't shake off the feeling that. She might be looking at him, that very moment. And, as if to confirm his fear, he heard something moving inside the coffin. Followed by something scratching from the inside, he fell on the ground with a panic. And it wasn't just he; all the adults around also turned pale. Regardless, the scratching noise got louder. They had to open the coffin, and what they found inside baffled everybody. Inside the belly of the dead woman were kittens. Apparently, a stray cat must have found a shelter in the woman's body, and gave birth there. Stuck in the coffin, kittens crawled out, and scratched for help. The whole experience traumatized my teacher, and he still fears cats. Hi, it's Anthony here, and thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. These stories did put some more complex context to our relationship to cats, didn't they? I do love the elusiveness of cats, but I think the control freak in me would get too frustrated if I ever get to keep a cat myself. The age-old question again: Are you a cat person or a dog person? At least in the world of horror stories from Korea, cats reign well above dogs. If you enjoyed my work, please give it a thumbs up and a comment, and please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. If you'd support me more directly, I also have a Buy Me a Coffee account, or there's also the Super Thanks option here on YouTube for a small donation. For my tiny channel, every comment, every new subscription, and every small donation means a lot. Thank you. I'll come back next Sunday. Stay safe. And take care.